In this video, we are going to be covering how to make an iMovie. For iMovie, the logo is a purple star with the movie camera in it. Looks like that. So, if it's not located down here on your dock, that's okay, don't worry. I'm going to be showing you the other way to find it. What you need to do is find your finder. Yes, I know, it's kind of punny. Uh, finder is this guy right here. He kind of looks like a two-faced person. You can either have just the normal smiley face or someone looking at another. So there's that. And you're just going to open that up. And you usually will always open you up to all my files. We do not want all my files. We just want applications. As you can see, my applications are right there, and it says iMovie. For some of you, your iMovie night might not be on screen, and you all you have to do is click search and type in iMovie. And that will make your iMovie appear. So click your iMovie and have that open. And it will open you up to a page similar to this. You won't have many videos here, if any. If this is your first video, that's fine. So what you'll be doing is being prompted to hit new movie or add movie, and you can choose between a movie or a trailer. Uh, for this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use a movie because the trailer is kind of a step-by-step -step, just drop your own image in there or drop your own text in there. There's not much freedom with it. Uh, we get much more freedom with the movie, which I think would be more beneficial for us as teachers. So we click on movie and all these options appear. So before anyone freaks out, I promise you we'll do very, very normal, easy, simple stuff first, and then we'll move into the more complicated things. So first things first is I like to adjust my screen so that I can kind of see my videos. So over here I have the video of how to use uh, Keynote for beginners. I'm just going to drag that and drop this in to my movie. Now that my video is in place, it's currently downloading, which you can see up there, which is showing activity. And once that's downloaded, we will have the entire video to move with, and it's downloaded. So <clears throat> what we have now is just this little segment of the video of how to use Keynote. So what we can do here is we have a bunch of different editing options. So what we have to do is first click on your image. And where you can see this little triangle guy is at, let's see if I can zoom in on him, that little triangle spot is marked where you're at in your movie. So if we move this all the way to the beginning, you'll see the very first uh, appearance of what's going on. So what we're going to do now is kind of come up here and just look at some of these editing settings. So your editing settings up here kind of give you some pretty cool details. Um, this first one you guys might be familiar with if you use Pick Stitch. Uh, this is to automatically improve both the video and audio quality. Um, I highly recommend using this just because with all the background noise and bell ringings and things, even when we're using the classrooms that are really quiet, there's always some type of background noise, and this kind of just helps enhance what they're hearing. Plus, who doesn't like seeing an even better picture of the Coliseum? So, moving on to the next one, you have these other options here. So, this first option um, automatically get, does auto coloring, which I don't really mess around with this because I trust the computer to do good auto coloring. The next one is your color correction. So now after it's autoed, you can kind of move these around. So maybe if you want a little bit of a dollar picture, you can kind of just move these on the bar. Um, I like mine keeping more of a natural look, so we'll leave that as is. <coughs> Sorry for that. Um, over here, we have our different colors of the rainbow. And what this does is this can enhance the colors or kind of drown the colors out to give you that black and white appeal. Um, depending on what type of movie you're showing or trying to create, maybe if you're giving a history lesson, you might want to make everything in black and white. Or if you are doing something in art, you might want to make everything very vibrant and full of color so you can really see the texture detail. Uh, to me, though, since it's just a how-to video, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to leave it in the middle. 
and of course you just have your tones so in this video it's my main two colors are yellow and blue so the movie is allowing me to choose between making it a blue filter or a hard yellow filter once again it's a how-to video I'm keeping it in the middle next uh, segment over here is cropping so you can crop to fill or you can crop to fit <coughs> sorry let me get a quick drink of water So with a fit, you can fit the entire outside of the screen in. With crop to fill, you can navigate it to see how much of the parts you want. Um, if you didn't see my how-to for Keynote, just like in Keynote, this gives you the absolute center, and you can even find the absolute, absolute uh, left to right or absolute up and down and absolute center, and you can kind of move it around that way. Uh, for me, I want to make sure that the how to use Keynote video is fully seen by everyone, so I'm going to keep it at fit. Um, you can also do Ken Burns. I've never really used this before, but what you can do is you can make it kind of have like a burn appeal around the side, which is kind of cool. Um, I have never used it though, so I'm not even going to go into it because just like you guys, I'm still experimenting with this stuff from time and time again. So I'm going to stick with fit. Uh, your next option is a video like uh, sustainability. So if you're shooting a video by hand uh, with an iPhone, with an iPad, and you know like you, everyone can't hold it straight or maybe your hands are a little shaky from talking or sh shooting the video, um, you can actually make it a stabilized, a shaky video, and that will automatically scan through the entire video and make it less shaky. Um, I have no stabilizing shaky video or uh, fixed rolling shutter, which is kind of like the continuous changing of the scene. I don't have either of those because both of my videos were screencasts, which is why this is just going to keep spinning. So we'll move on to the next section, which is volume. Um, once again, you can have your volume auto-corrected, um, which we automatically did with the enhance over here. Now if we click this off, this turns the auto off and you can actually mute your own video so that if I wanted you to hear the video I'm saying on top of that video, I can then drop this video in. I know it sounds confusing, I'll show that in a minute, that's one of the more advanced options. So for now we're just going to leave all the sounds on, I'm going to leave the enhanced on and we're fine there. So what we can do is this next one is kind of like your pitches, so you can make it uh, so I hit play. There, in this video today, I'm going to be covering how to do keynotes. And what that does is gives you a little demo of the flat sound. But what we can do is we can use a voice enhance, which would then enhance my voice of the video. In keynote presentations, uh, this keynote presentation guide is more towards beginners. Now, for you guys on there, you're rehearing it through a microphone, so it might not sound as good to you. But to me, I can definitely hear a little bit of an improvement. Now, I don't know if you were hearing it, but I am in the hub in a closed room. So my voice kind of echoes a little bit. And what we can do is reduce the background noise. And you can kind of choose how much you want to reduce that background noise all the way up to 100%. So that should help eliminate the echo if you're doing individual recordings. So what we're going to do next is hit play and just kind of start it over from the beginning and make sure we like everything that's happening. There, in this video today I'm going to be covering how to do keynotes and keynote presentations. Uh, this keynote presentation... So my echo is completely gone from the room, which is fantastic. That was what I was hoping to lose. And my crop still shows the entire outside of the image, which is great because I'm going to be using all the edges of the screen in this video. Uh, next thing we can do is kind of make things a little bit more fun. So maybe you have a long time-lapsing video or even a lab and you don't want to show the entire thing. Um, to me, this reminds me from when I was in high school with Bill Nye the Science Guy. You can actually pinpoint certain sections. So if we go back down here, right now this is one full-length video for 15.8 minutes. But wherever I put this cursor and if I press two fingers down, which is also most people know as right click, which is now no longer the proper term. Um, it's actually considered secondary click. 
So if we secondary click, um, we can actually hit this button right here called split clip. And when we split the clip, it breaks this, the picture into two segments. So we now have one segment and two segments of this video. So the first part of this video is now 8.1 uh, seconds while this is now 15.7 minutes. So what I can do is, is maybe this part at the beginning I want to have my entire explanation out there. So if I hit play, I want to do keynotes and keynote presentations. Uh, this keynote presentation guide is more towards beginners. So if you're feeling more calm. And then it automatically moves into the next one. So it's still connected, but now it can add things in between. So if I wanted to add something in there to really give it more of a flare, what you can do is hit transitions, and maybe I want to add a Looney Tunes circle open. And I can literally drop that in between the two, and all I had to do was take this from here and drag it down, and it opens up and drops it in. So now when we watch this, it's going to have a thing, and I would like you guys to watch it in full screen. There, in so this video go. today, I'm going to be covering how to do keynotes and keynote presentations. Uh, this keynote presentation guide is more towards beginners, so if you're feeling more confident, I'll be posting another video shortly. So if we go down here and we see this guy right here, this is your keynote app. We'll click it and open. So as you can see there, it didn't really last very long because it was so fast and the page was the same. But if we added maybe something a little bit different, so fade to black, and you can also test it with a little bit of a just rolling over your cursor. So instead of having you guys dread through listening to me twice again, see how it goes black for one second and then changes? Well, if you want this to be a little bit longer, you can actually double click with just one finger and change this duration to, let's say, five seconds, and hit apply. So what it does now is now we have a five minute where it fades to black. So hit play. There, in this video today, I'm going to be covering how to do keynotes and keynote presentations. Uh, this the keynote fade to black. presentation guide is more towards beginners. And then it fades back So if you're feeling more confident. So you could do that if you want. Um, for me, I like the video as a whole. So what I'm going to do is delete that, delete one of these. I'm sorry, I did that really quick. I'm going to just drop another one in real fast. So, Okay, so the way we had it was like this. So to delete this, all you have to do is click on the transition and hit the delete button, and it's gone. Now, I did say I like these as a whole. Uh, once you split the clip, you cannot make it one full clip again, as far as I know. Um, so what I can just show you is, is by putting nothing in between, it full runs. And instead of having you listen to me once again, just take my word for it, it works. So um, what we're going to do now is work on adjusting speed. So like, just like in Bill Nye the Science Guy, um, if you go back up here to like the little speed speedometer up here, um, you can actually change the speed of the video. So what we're going to do is make this go fast. And what I like to see over here, sorry about that, is the different times. So you can make this go as fast as you want, but 20 times is going to be really fast. So what we're going to do is do four. I'm going to have it start right here at this beginning of the second clip, and we get to enjoy listening to me in little chipmunk voice. So just like how that is being shown now super, super fast, if we go back to sound, we can actually cut the sound to that part of the video. So when this is now showing a time lapse, whether it be a lab or something, there might be a noise that you don't want to be hearing or maybe someone says something inappropriate and you just want it left out. Well, by hitting this little mute button, you've now muted the video. So instead of it just showing it at a inappropriate uh, time or place for sound, um, you can just hit play and now it'll be silent but it's still moving at that fast speed, which, just listen to that, it sounds so much more peaceful than... Yeah, it's just annoying. Who wants to deal with that? So, um, if you don't want to do with the speed, all you have to do is change it back to normal, and that changes the speed back here down to normal. So, let's say uh, a couple of other things for editing is... I think that's about it. I mean... For this stuff, it's not as much as you would think. 
uh, would be challenging. Um, I think what's important here is you kind of just get the entire video to work with and edit. So if you want to add some interesting transitions, you can. If you want to add some editing, you can. Um, so other things up here we have are titles. Now, I really like adding titles. Um, I do this for my co-top classes. Um, when there's guided notes. Uh, we do a couple of like demo labs because not every lab you can do in a classroom. Um, so they might have a couple of questions and I like to like drop a little hint that hey you should be writing something here. So what we can do is is literally drag this over and as you can see where I'm holding this we're getting that little plus sign again like we were from the keynote video on how to add images which ironically is what is showing on the screen right now I promise you I did not plan that, but this is going to be perfect. So what we're going to do here is just drop it in. Drop that in. That then makes the text appear here. Now that's very hard to see, but what you can do is just click on it, and you can change your text. So maybe I want to make this how to work, and then I'm going to highlight that so that you guys can see that I wrote how to work. But you might want to change the color of it to blue or maybe even a darker blue so make sure it appears up on that screen and once again you can use the wheel you can use your little slider this is set to grayscale but you can go to all your different colors needs to get it to work however you want um, so that's the editing of the text so I'll finish this with how to work Google once again, that's a different line, so it won't take the same text, so we have to do it again. And this time it's sliders, so maybe I'll move it towards red, towards darker blue, which leads me closer to a black. So I might want to make this bold so it's easier to see, and I'll do that with the same at the top. And I promise you this will not be in the video because I would never allow those two colors to come together. But, you know, it's just a how-to video, so for that, it works. So we now have the how to Google that pops up randomly for us in the video. So we'll watch that real quick. And I still have the volume muted from before. So let's start with an image slide. So I'm going to keep that muted just so that it's a little bit less annoying. But if we watch right here on the screen, you'll see how this will start to appear roughly in a few seconds. So with these videos, I'm really hoping to help just give you guys some additional information on how to be working with these apps to get them to really come into light to help you really enhance that classroom experience. Um, I've used these multiple times in my classroom and the students absolutely love the videos because they feel like they're more interactive and they also feel like they can be one on one. So I'm going to speed up the video just a little bit here. Just so we can watch this part. So there's me dropping in the image, and the how to Google should be popping up. So as you can see there, there it appears, but it's a little too quick. I actually even missed it the first time. I thought I messed up and I thought I was going to have to edit the video. But as you can see down here, it shows that open area right there. Now this might be too small to work with for some of you. So what we can do is actually stretch out our layers so we can really get into this. So what we can do now is actually really click on this text box and we can actually just stretch out its duration. So as you can see here right now, it's set for four seconds. And now it's now stretched out for 15. And how I do that is just reach the edge, and you can move it to how long you want it to be. Still working at this time slot when it comes in. So now it appears for five seconds, and then it leaves. So that's how I use it to fill in those guided notes in my classroom. Um, a couple of other things you can add is music. 
Um, for me, I have a little tune that I have created off of a website. And what you can do is green will always show as audio, and you can drop that wherever you want, and that can also overlay it. That's more of the advanced things. So that would then sound like this. Hey, this picture looks good. So now that you have the image that you want, you can hit the combination of the buttons, Command, Shift, and 4. And as you do that, you will now see that my cursor is kind of a... So that's a, another way just to add some music and give it some background feel. Uh, the music that says Mr. K Beats is the song I used from the internet. The Brave, Toy Story, and Twilight Zone theme will all be copyrighted hit because they are copyrighted in themselves where the Mr. K Beats was created by me. So that means I wouldn't be able to post this video on YouTube using any of these, uh, which is why I end up using the Mr. K Beats. Um, so what you can do is click on this to get that yellow bar again, and let's say we don't want this music. It's copyrighted. You can just delete it. So now we're back to just the normal talking with the text now appearing over there. So um, a couple other things we can do on here is if you go back to just my media, you can also insert pictures. Now um, if you scroll all the way through to the end of the video, you still have this empty slot at the end. So what we can do is actually add a video, and I'm going to add this picture, which is the long time ago from a presentation far, far away. And what this actually is is just a quick little GIF I found on the Internet, and it just zooms in at the end. So what it does is just a nice, clean playthrough. So we'll watch the last few seconds and of this. And reopen it to work on editing Once again, I will want. cancel my other voice so that we don't have to hear it twice. And as you can see, as it runs through that ends and the other presentation will appear. Same with an image. If it wants to be a still image, you can do that as well. And using the stretch technique is how we can also prolong its duration. Um, I hope this video helps you. If you have any other questions, comments, or concerns, ooh, wait, I actually forgot about something. Um, so now that we're done, we actually need to export this. So what we'll do is we're gonna hit this button up here, and I like to share this as a file. So what we do is we hit file, and you can actually pick what you want your like image to look like. So I'm going to choose that. So it's a long time ago in a presentation far, far away. Um, I usually don't touch any of these. I think they're fine as is. It's telling me the approximate download time is 16 minutes and 9 seconds, which is also the length of the video, and that it's a 35.7 gigabyte estimate. Um, I always add it to my feeder. I hit next. And I always save it to desktop, and I'm going to call this video the How to Make a Keynote video. Now, I promise this won't be the real thing people will see for the beginner's one, but as you can see, the My Movie is too long to upload to iCloud. That's fine. I don't use iCloud anyways, so I'm just going to add it to the computer. And once our little activity bar starts showing here, that will show when the download is full. Uh, iMovie will also give you a little presentation up here saying, congratulations, your transfer has been successful. I won't uh, have you guys sit here and wait for that. So I will see you next time in the next how-to video.